Now, obviously, we are joined by Amanda Cromwell, head coach of UCLA, and Sarah Killian, and Chelsea Stewart. And uh, as we did a couple of days ago, we'll ask Coach Cromwell to open with a general statement, and then we'll open the floor for questions. Thank you. It's uh, very good to be back at this press conference uh, in between games and talking about the next day. Um, you know, it's one more game, and uh, we've been through quite a, a process, not, not only the the playoffs and the, um, you know, the the track we took to get here, but just the whole season. And I'm just really proud of these girls uh, for what they accomplished. Um, and just very excited for a great game uh, tomorrow. Uh, last night was awesome. Virginia is such a quality team. And again, I give credit to them and uh, what, what Steve has done with that program. Um, very proud as an alum. And uh, I'm just looking forward to a great game tomorrow. I mean, I overheard a story the other day, Thursday. Oh, no. Oh, drive, no. <laughs> you were driving the news conference, and you had to take a detour. We did. Right. What What happened on that? Just, can you feel me? There was a car accident. Okay. And, and so how did you get around it? We used a thing, an app called Waze. On <laughs> your smartphone? On you, my smartphone, yes. So you weren't driving. Someone else was driving. I was not you. driving. Okay. Yeah. Want, don't want to send the wrong message to... to uh, but you, so you pull out your smartphone, you found a detour. Correct. We got off the highway because that's the ex We could see actually the the lights up ahead, so we got off the exit and found a, a nice route here. And you were on time. J just about. I think we're maybe two minutes late. Okay. Thanks. I just <laughs> I heard it. I just wanted. What's the story you heard? Was a little different. Essentially that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, so something I missed. I didn't know. I didn't know if you were talking about somebody else. If it was your party or it was you in, in the car. Oh. Just, oh no. Yeah. Details are important. Exactly. Okay. Thanks, I appreciate it. Uh, coach, um, you play four different ACC sides this season, um, including you played three obviously in the pre-conference season, which I would assume was intentional to help strengthen the team and, and uh, you know, probably playing on the postseason. But what do you think you've learned uh, collectively from those games in the pre-conference and then now having played UNC and Virginia that will maybe help you going into this game against Florida State? Well, first I have to say BJ was a genius in setting up the schedule. Um, he, he knew the, the quality of this team and what uh, they needed to be prepared for a, a great postseason run. And uh, going to Notre Dame's tournament and coming uh, to North Carolina for Duke's tournament was huge for our preparation. And we were exposed with some things that we needed to be exposed. And obviously our one loss of the season was against uh, UNC. And I think we showed that we redeemed ourselves. We learned some things and came back and uh, you know, fought a great game. And uh, you know you have, to, you have to play the best teams in the country to get better. Uh, and that's what the Pac-12 did for us as well. Uh, you know, Stanford, you know, for having a down year <laughs> was a very good team, and they pushed us as well in the in the, in the playoffs. Uh, that was a high-quality game that seemed re like surreal that it was a Sweet 16 game. It, it should have seemed like it should have been further down the road. Uh, so all these games helped prepare us. I had a question for Sarah. Are we mm -hmm. Sure. Okay. Uh, Sarah, we didn't have you here last night, but you had a, a great little threaded ball set. Uh, court hall on the goal. Thank you. And yeah. that's something you do all the time, very underappreciated. But if, if you can just take us back to uh, your memory of the play and how you you try to impact the game in that way, you've had come up with some big assists this year. Not a lot of, I think maybe only one goal, but yeah. But, but you impact <laughs> the game in the way you can from that holding midfielder spot. Yeah. Um, I think Caprice had the ball on the outside, and there was just a lot of space in the midfield. So uh, she saw me and she made a good pass, and I had a little bit of space to dribble and. Um, was just kind of waiting last second, last second until I saw something and saw Allie out of the corner of my eye and just slipped her in. The the general vibe or feeling that it's pretty tense at that point, five minutes to go. Did you were you feeling pressure? Do you think your teammates were, or you guys came through in the clutch? But. I mean, I definitely think we were feeling pressure, but it was kind of what was motivating us to push forward. It was like, I mean, we kind of gave them their goal, so. We knew it was kind of like an adrenaline shot, and we were forced to go forward, and it kind of forced us to make that play. And we definitely felt the pressure, but I think it was um, like it was a positive, like it was a positive for us. I think. I, I did a quick little follow up on that. It, 
if you could tell us what your role is like as a holding midfielder. It is very anonymous. Um, we had a couple great ones here last year, Maria Nagara and mm -hmm. uh, UNC Am uh, Amber Brooks. Amber Brooks. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you're definitely in their class as well. But tell us how you've adapted to that role. Is it something you've played and on other teams you've played with national team wise at high school? Yeah, um, in high school I kind of switched off between attacking mid and holding mid. And then for the U20 team last year, I played uh, holding mid for that team. So, I mean, that's obviously that experience as a holding mid helped a ton. And um, my role, I just always try to be, you know, there for the team offensively and defensively. And just, you know, we were struggling kind of in the first 10, 15 minutes. So I just tried to get the ball and um, play as simple as I could and just try to get everybody, like, a good touch on the ball just to calm us down. Coach said you never get the ball away. Were you, were you always that type of player as a kid? Were you always like really good with ball security and possession and passing? Um, I try to be. <laughs> <laughs> so has it been weird at all? So many members of that U20 team, and you had great success when mm -hmm. you know, play against each other all throughout the season. Mm -hmm. Is it weird to see them on the other side when you were teammates for a long time? Yeah, definitely. It's it's weird to see them, but it's a um, it's exciting to see them and play against them. I mean, I think we all kind of know a little of each other's strengths, strengths and weaknesses, but um, we've all changed a ton since a year ago, and uh, it's exciting and it's actually really nice to see everybody and play against everybody. But um, everybody's so competitive, and we all feel like we want to win this thing, and we all obviously know how competitive each other are from being on that team. So it's exciting. For Coach, have you always liked playing with two holding moves, or was that kind of a, a reaction to what you found yourself with, with Sarah and Jenna when you got to see all of that? You know, um, I was always kind of against two holding mids until actually uh, last year at UCF. We, we played the 4 2 3 one and a little of that was the input of our assistant coaches and kind of what what the play, I've never been a coach that's married to one system. I kind of like to see with the players um, how, how they fit the system best and what system that is. And um, with those three, with, with, with Jenna and, and Sarah and Sam, it's um, and you have to have three midfielders really uh, centrally. So um, it just it, it fits the team to have two holding and um, and you see, Jenna's a little bit more of an intermediate. She'll make some more runs forward, and Sarah will sit more. And she, and one of the keys of last night in the first half was her popping out wide to get the ball almost as a left back at times, and that released Caprice to get up the field, and that was that was key. So, um, I, you know, I think the way they play it, it's you know, it can look like um, too attacking a lot as well. Man, you mentioned last night the uh, series with Florida State when you were at UCF. What? Could you characterize that for us, you know, what it was like and what you, know, you might have learned from that? Yeah, it's a great, that was a great in-state rivalry at UCF with Florida State. And um, actually, I was just reminiscing one of, our, one of our biggest wins at UCF early on was, uh, was when Patrick Baker was still the coach at Florida State. And it was their senior night. We were down 2-0 at half. And so I went in the locker room and said some words and um, a, a loud voice and uh, came out in 3-4-3 three, three and said, well, we're going to win this game or lose it 6-0. And we won it 3-2, to two, scored in the last 10 seconds of the game. Um, and that, that was a really a changing point for uh, the UCF program. Uh, that's, that's the reason we got in that large bid that year. We Generally, in, that, in the conference we were in, we would have to win the conference to get the at-large or get the automatic. And we got the at-large that year. And, and, and after that game, we, we had some great games with them. Three, three ties, close, you know, one nil either way. Um, so we're, you know, it was, it's a team I'm very familiar with. And, and when Mark came in there, he's done such a great job. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I, I just respect their team a lot. Coach, touching on um, what you had said as, as far as formation changes and adapting to the, the amount of talent you had in the midfield, um, can you talk about what you've done with your formation this season? It seems like earlier in the season you were playing with more up top, like a, uh, maybe three players up top. Um, <laughs> What have, what have you done, you know, with your players to adjust, and, and what formation, why have you settled into the formation you have? I mean, it's the end of the season, but um, just talk about that, how you've progressed with your formation through the season. Um, the great thing about our formation that we play, you know, it's, we call it a 4-2-3-1, and it can look like three up top. Um, we generally don't uh, 
play three high all the time and just sit there in the in the three front. Uh, it gives the it gives the players like you know, Stewie coming in as a flank player. You know she's done an awesome job. Uh, you know pinching inside. You see Rosie doing it last night. Uh, Cody's been very good, and Taylor. I mean, it's given Taylor so much freedom um, to really. Sometimes it looks like a two front how we play. Sometimes it looks like an offset four four two. Uh, so that's why we like the the fluid motion of our front runners in that formation. But we've also played a three five two. You saw us go to that when we needed a goal. That's why. You know, Allie was a little higher in the midfield uh, last night because uh, she was she pushed up as a midfielder at that point, and um, you know, so they're just comfortable. Uh, we've we've worked on almost every formation you can think of, and they're they're you know they're all these players. You know, we have two internationals coming off the bench that have been in the Olympics, so that tells you something about our experience and uh, what they're used to. So they they've all played so many formations that we can we can change it in game and it won't rattle them at all. Chelsea, speaking of you and the Olympics, your nickname is Stewie, huh? Yes. Um, <laughs> you, you, you transferred from Vanderbilt, and then uh, you, you started earlier in your career. This year playing a little bit more of a roll off the bench, but important, not only in the back line, but some forward as well, correct? And more, more attacking. Mm -hmm. um, and only a couple seniors, a handful of seniors on the team. I don't know if you struck you last night. That was almost Jenna, the end of Jenna's career there, and she was sitting on the bench at the end. But... Just kind of walk us through your career and how it's progressed and, and the different roles you've had and you know even your, your decision to transfer initially uh yeah um started my career at vanderbilt um went there for academics have some family out there and some uh, club players who are older than me that went to school there so um, ended up there um wound up at ucla uh because of bj snow and um it was a great decision I've enjoyed my time here quite a bit, and um, yeah, um, playing different roles, there's always, um, I mean, coming off of the bench, it's game-changing, so it's really on your shoulders, like if something's going wrong in the game or something like that, you need to either put in some more energy or ch tactically change the game somehow, um, so I think that's been one of my favorite parts this year, of trying to affect the game from the bench. Can you tell us something a little quick about Jenna and just as being one of yeah. the other main senior? And I know you guys all want to win, but maybe it's a little extra boost to do it for her. She's been with the program four years. It's such a little part. Yeah. Jenna's definitely one of the leaders on our team, hands down. She's um, She does the work on the field, off the field, and she's also a very big voice on the team. Um, I mean, even before the game yesterday, she'll have a few words before going out on the field, and those are the words that you listen to. Those are the words that kind of affect you the most. and kind of drives you to push and even this morning at breakfast our goalie Caitlin was sitting at breakfast and telling us all, all day yesterday all I could think about in net was I'm going to make this save for Jenna I'm going to make this save for our seniors <laughs> so it's like it's nice to see that it's that they're playing for us or playing for the team so it's been and Jenna's incredible so you couldn't ask for a better senior in there uh, Sarah and Chelsea can y'all talk about first year with Amanda obviously you're going to have to say everything nice as she's sitting right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do. What adjustments did you have to make? What was different when she came in that you guys had to, to get used to? And uh, presumably with her reputation, you guys really bought in into what she brought to the team right away. But can you talk about what she did differently that you guys, uh, that really impressed you guys? Sure. Um, the first thing that we heard of before Amanda came in, <laughs> I'm going for it, was that she is a fitness Nazi. So I think that scared the crap out of us initially. Um, but she came in and in late spring, and we were able to kind of get to know her a little bit, get a little used to her style of things. And, I mean, just look at the season so far. that It's been incredible to have her out here. I think she's been one of the biggest difference makers for our team. Um, to make it to this point. Um, I think just adding on to that too, I think that um, one thing I've noticed a lot is that she gives players the freedom to like show what they have at any practice, whether like who's playing, who's not. Um, people just feel like their personalities on the field are able to come out because she gives everybody such freedom to do what they want and like show their creativity. And I think that that's been awesome. This is for Coach and Sarah. Um, 
set, set plays could be a big role tomorrow for both teams. Obviously, Florida State has uh, uh, Dagny, and they've got the throw in, a Pikmin on set play. <laughs> and you guys have, I saw your guys practice the other day, and I kept it, everything I saw inside, of course. But uh, uh, you guys have a lot of options there. If you could both just comment on how set plays can play such an important role, special, especially here at the end of the year. Uh, especially when. Uh, Two teams are so evenly matched as it comes down to little things, and um, that throw-in is very dangerous, and I'm familiar with it from my games past with them. Uh, they've had, they've seemed to always have a long throw-in, always, like, it's so kind of annoying. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's almost like rather, rather than have a corner than a throw-in because it's a better angle for us to defend. Uh, so we have, you know, obviously we've, we've seen some throughout the season, so we've worked on defending those. Uh, but more importantly, on our attack, I think we have to be. We we earned, I think, eight corners last night, and we we weren't too threatening. I think one of them was uh, a, good, a really good ball played in. But we have to be better on our corner kicks. So we'll you know fine tune those for sure. Just talking about some things, and and then the free kicks. I mean, Sarah hit a great free kick uh, that you know I think it's a foot over uh, to the side that goes in. The keeper made a great save though. Uh, but those little things, we have to be a little maybe. Uh, Crafty, show some things you haven't shown all year. Cause, you know, we all have video on each other and have talked to some, um, you know, non-conference opponents. Uh, so uh, it's it's really important to be have the the set plays just be fine-tuned and everything. Everyone knows what's going on. Sarah, maybe not only talk about yourself, but Sam and Abby can really crack it um, on those 30, 35 yard free kicks. And I would guess you're a little more finesse and spin <laughs> or something. But but you guys have a lot of options. Maybe just talk about that. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, Abby can crack the ball, and so can Sam. So, uh, and even besides that, they they can both place the ball too. So I think like we're all very dynamic in what we can do, and we have a lot of options. And um, it's just that given situation, kind of what we decide. We kind of huddle up, and you know, whichever one is kind of feeling it, just goes for it. So. Abby's a semifinalist for Matt Herman. Can you talk about her some, uh, as well as Megan, their partnership as, as center backs and what's that, what that's done for your team? Yeah, the, I mean, our back line has been phenomenal. Um, and, you know, really, we had, uh, we didn't really have Megan slated as a starter to, um, you know, to start preseason. We had uh, Gabby Miranda in there, and Gabby's a player that's, uh, you know, it's another player coming off the bench at the U20 national team pool. Uh, that she's she's played a lot of the center back left back and it's like how do we not have this player in the game like she's so good so uh, you know that's just a big testament to Megan and what she's done to um, kind of she earned a way into her starting role and uh, throughout her training sessions and her first start I think was the Notre Dame game and she just stepped up big and and her and Abby just go fit well together that communicates uh, they're both so good in the air uh, they read off each other you know it's the step and covering aspect uh, but you know, you look at Abby's game. I mean, she's just a full package. You know, she has the speed. She's strong. She's tall. Uh, she can um, shut down anybody one v one. And I know as a team, we just feel better with her in the game. You know, that's that's the reason why I think we have the best uh, defense in the country. I had just a fun question for the players. You guys have been here in North Carolina for ten, eleven <laughs> days. You come Wednesday or Thursday? Wednesday. So okay. So like basically like a week and a half. Um, favorite parts of hanging out in the Tar Heel State. Any, any, is it just being together? Anything specific activities you guys have done? That have been the I know shopping for outfits for the banquet was a big one. We mm -hmm. But um, anything else to show up? That's just a fun, funny little anecdote or story. Or... <laughs> Sarah, you had a test, right? You had to work that out? And... Yeah, I had two tests, actually. I had one Monday and Wednesday. And that goes for a lot of people. I know a lot of people had tests today, actually. Um, so we've been doing a lot of studying and um, proctoring exams and projects and papers. Um, that's taken up most of the time, really. But yeah, kind of like a training camp atmosphere almost. Like yeah, embedded. yeah, hotel life. Yeah, mm -hmm. studying, watching. As well movie. as the comical breaks with Snapchats yeah. or pranks. <laughs> pranks. Those come along with it. <laughs> Gotta be on your toes. Yeah, definitely. Anything else for coach or the players? Thanks, coach. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.